It's that time of the month you guys have been waiting for. It's the community redraw. So let's bring some demons to life. As promised for this next meeting, we have a new demonology lecturer taking over this particular subject for the Department of Multiversal Matters. And before any of you say anything, yes, we do realize she is a demon. I can assure you, before allowing her to have any freedom within the organization, she has had extensive, and I mean extensive, measures taken. I can vouch that she has been an integral part in identifying and classifying new species of demons from Earth 666. In fact, she is the sole reason that many of the files and archives we have over the last four years have been created with little to no loss for life of the research members. But enough from me, I'll hand you over to your new lecturer in demonology. Thank you for the rather kind introduction. As you can see, I am a demon and I will provide you with more information on my abilities and what type of demon I am over time. But for now, let me introduce myself. I am Demonica Darkstorm and as you are told, I am your new demonology lecturer. I am sure you have multiple questions for me, but since we are behind already, let's begin with today's lecture, shall we? Starting with the first creature on the list today, we have Balas, one of the more interesting, although unpleasant looking, demonic creatures you'll find on Earth 666. Not the most horrific, but still one that would give most people nightmares. This creature, known as Balask, it possesses super enhanced strength, making its physical attacks troublesome to deal with, and one to watch out for if you encounter this demon. The Balask also has a high defense with its endoskeleton. This creature likes to fight with strong opponents and has been known to have a high level of patience waiting in a dormant state until it senses another with a strong aura in its presence. Now to discuss the types of attack this demon has. The main attack is a laser blast it can shoot from the crystal on its back. This is a high powered energy blast that can easily destroy most of the lower end creatures and demons in Earth 666. However, can any of you guess or tell me what its weakness might be? You might be surprised to learn that the weakness of this creature is in fact its crystal on its back. However, when the crystal is removed or destroyed, the ballast suddenly becomes a lot faster and ferocious. Its eyesight is another one of its weak points. What surprised it can see? Yes, it has tiny eyes. But due to this, it's caused to have a, to have very short sightedness. Although, as they say, if one sense fails or is weaker, the others become stronger. This is also true. The Balask, the strongest feature is its hearing, able to pick up the smallest of sounds amongst thousands and track its target. From one creature that can see to one that cannot. This demon is known as Lapari. The origin of its name is derived from the Malay words Lapan meaning eight and Lapa meaning hungry. And this demon is hungry with an appetite for sentient beings to feed on their intelligence. This has led the Lapari to have an insane lack of sanity. The insatiable hunger has taken away almost any sense of reason from this creature, constantly hunting for prey when it finds a suitable target, this demonic creature will unleash the tentacles on its chest to ensnare its victim and pull it into its rib cage. Until it attacks, you would not realize the tentacles are on its chest. Once the prey is in its rib cage, it is slowly absorbed by the body of the Lapari over a period of eight days. This may seem like a long time to digest its prey for a demon. However, there is a benefit from this. During the time that the Lapari is digesting its victim, it will regain some sense of sanity and reason. It turns out that eight days is the limit this demon can retain a sane mental state, before descending back into the depths of insane hunger. The constant hunger drives the Lapari to continuously hunt down victims and feed on their minds. Often found stalking those of a more intellectual nature, the smarter the prey, the more of a delicacy it is. Oh yes, I mentioned at the start that the Lapari cannot see. In fact, it is blind. They are actually a mushroom-like type of fungi that are shaped like eyes but can detect motion. In essence, this gives the Lapari a form of sightless vision, 
using a form of echolocation similar to species such as bats. The lapari also has a form of defence that is rather useful while it digests its prey. Other than the tentacles being somewhat soft, the rest of the body is covered in a thick endoskeleton that is tough enough to resist most bullets. Here's a quick pop quiz for everyone. Don't worry, it's just one question. In fact, why don't you all answer in the comments below? We will wait a few seconds for you to do that. Yes, you, the ones watching this video. You know who you are. I can see you there looking a bit puzzled as I talk directly to you. Maybe you're wondering how I know you're watching this part. Well, here's the question for you to answer. So hurry up, be a dear, and put it in the comments below. Are you ready? You are excellent. Okay, here we go. True or false? Are demons evil? I'll give you a moment to answer the question before we continue. Have you answered? You have? Brilliant. How about liking this video and I'll let you know the answer to the question. Okay, the answer is false. Kind of obvious as I am not an evil demon or on a rampage as mentioned by the agent earlier. Yes, I am a demon, yet I have saved the many lives of agents within the Department of Multiversal Matters. Speaking of false, that is the name of our next demon. One who does not always class as good or evil, it depends on your perspective. This demon is one of the few that are able to travel the multiverse. The reason for this is to capture symbiotes that might cause trouble. What happens after they are captured? We don't know. However, this group of demons are more than adept at handling the situation. No one knows who his family is or who he really is. The age of this demon is also unknown, although I will let you know there are records and tales dating back around 138 years. So we can safely say he's at least 138 years old, able to keep up with a symbiote's host due to having enhanced speed, strength and endurance. False is also incredibly intelligent and the special abilities he possesses allow him to be resourceful in nature. He is able to be of almost anything out of the items around him. I would recommend if you encounter this demon and are one of its targets, you don't try to outsmart or outwit him. False can solve one quintillion, I did say it, quintillion problems, puzzles and equations in less than half a second. A prime example of his genius and resourcefulness, False used his ability to build a new arm, leg and tail after his original limbs were lost. The tail and arm float making them extremely useful tools at his disposal. He has a few weaknesses but his demonic bloodline allows him to be immune to fire. Another weakness is that his attacks use up a lot of energy causing him to need to rest and recover after using them. It has been spotted that when he needs to rest up, given the chance, he likes to watch a YouTuber from your dimension. A Dempsey J illustrations I believe they said it was. Whoever that might be. Do any of you out there know? Yes, you the viewers watching this, have you heard of this YouTuber before? If he is good as false believes, why not let him, what was it? The other thing, um, was it sub, subscribe? Although scribes record things, so this terminology is a little bit new to me. Finally, to end our information about this hunter's symbiotes, he can create sonic waves of intense sound. He can fly as well as survive in places that have limited or no air. Creating portals to travel the multiverse is also an ability of false. However, it takes up the most energy and false has to recover out of using this one more so than his other abilities. Now that we have covered a positive influence in the demonic universe of Earth 666, we now have a rare treat for you all. A demonic knight from the deepest depths of hell. This one is a master of lances and spears and trained by the souls of countless experts in these weapons over the centuries. One of the more handsome demonic creatures in this universe, and I do mean handsome, hmm, very handsome, with an amazing fashion sense and a toned physique. He has quite the reputation as well as a fan base from demonic creatures of all types, especially the female demons. He is quite a dish. It adds to his charm that he doesn't care about his reputation or looks, 
drives the female demons crazy, he's focused on training and his duties, being a demon knight of the realm. Um, do you have a crush on him as well? Has he got a name or are you just going to um and ah when you talk about him? Um, <laughs> don't be absurd. I merely admire a fellow demon who has a renowned status and, well, like all attractive people, he is appeasing to the eye. Even the eyes of one such as myself. As for his name, I believe that is what you also asked. It has been lost to the ravages of time. He goes by the name the Crimson Lancer. The Crimson Lancer. It is rumoured that even the Crimson Lancer does not know his original name. All he knows is training with his weapons of choice, constantly striving to increase his skills and perfect his techniques. Such dedication. What makes him admirable for most of the demonic creatures as well as some members of the Department of Multiversal Matters is his code of honour. Don't be naive. Although it is rare, there are demons who, in Dimension Earth 66, live by a code of honour. Although criticised by many of how ridiculous or useless other more ruthless creatures in this hellish dimension see his code of honour, we do know some things about the code. He will not perform a surprise attack against any creature or kill any creature that has lost the will to fight. The only meat he eats will be from creatures he has killed in fair combat. This is not unusual in some cultures, but for a demon, it is very rare. When fighting, he will refuse to fight an opponent who is deemed too young, too old, too injured, to the point of no longer being able to fight fairly, or any combination of these factors. If the rare circumstance happens that he has to fight an opponent under these circumstances, he will refuse to kill those opponents, no matter the risk to his own self-worth. A rather admirable and desired demon in every sense. From one of the best looking demonic creatures to one of the more ferocious and animalistic creatures, this one is a really heavy contender and unable to stand on two legs for more than a fraction of a second before having to return to all fours. The main reason for this, the weight of this particular demon clocks in at 27,365 pounds approximately. You heard it right, this is one hell of a chunky demon, but don't let its weight and size for you. Even though it's 84 meters, this creature is known as the Demon of Gluttony and is called the Gluttonous Scruffer. This creature may not be the fastest in terms of speed, but it does have a rather unique ability. The Gluttonous Scruffer has a large mouth on its belly. In fact, this is much more than a normal mouth. It's used for devouring other beings. This mouth is a portal to another dimension. Part of me can't help but get a bit excited about a dimension like this. This demon consumes those that have sinned the sin of gluttony. If you encounter this beast, be wary as it will sense if you have been gluttonous and you may end up as its next prey. In terms of look, this demonic creature has a boar's head and hooves on its limbs. The wings, they seem a bit of a odd feature for the gluttonous scruffer given its weight. It's too large and too heavy to fly. Maybe they had a purpose when it was smaller before it got so heavy to enable it to travel from place to place and over time have become useless. We don't know, it's just a rather odd feature on this demon. The pinkish flesh all over its body is strong enough to withstand attack from most enchanted weaponry. Only the strongest of enchantments can damage its fleshy body. A rather useful defence, even though it does look a bit grotesque to look at. Speaking of disgusting and vile features of this demon, the gluttonous scruffer can shoot out a highly potent and concentrated acidic bile from its stomach. Capable of melting down a vast range of materials, this is a fierce and lethal attack. Not to mention the grossest attack we have on file today. Excuse me, but it is disgusting. Due to the size of this demon, its large belly slows it down significantly. The gluttonous scruffer is one who stalks its prey waiting for them to consume a meal before it attacks, ensuring they fulfill the slightest part of the sin of gluttony in order to activate the portal on its belly. It would seem strange that this creature can stalk its prey despite its large and overwhelming size. I must also mention, just to be clear, that this information was gathered with the help of a third party agency, and more information can be found in log entry 
174, which is property of Shogun Labs. Only those with the right level of clearance can view this log and more in-depth information about this demonic creature. Now it's time for our final demonic demon for today, and this one is a bit of a special demon. It's a humanoid demonic creature, one who is the leader of a universe-wide cult. Correction, a multiverse-wide cult. Resembling a fluffy black cat, he is seven foot tall with lime green soulless eyes. As you can imagine, being a cat-type demon, this one has sharp fangs and claws. Often seen in a black suit with red and gold details, he has demonic tattoos and around his neck is a puff of fur a bit like a lion's mane. The origin of this cult leader is a rather unique case for Earth 666, even amongst all the demonic creatures that exist and their origins. You see, this demon is not originally from Earth 66, it was a normal cat from Earth 616 who ended up wandering through a portal and to a village where many slain demons remained. This cat in its hunger ate some demonic meat from one of the bodies and transformed from an ordinary kitten into one with a demonic body and increased intelligence. This feline also gained demonic powers however there was a price to pay for this. He lost his eyesight. Over time, this demonic cult leader learned to use a form of echolocation to be able to see in some manner. The cult leader managed to persuade some demons who had artifacts and could travel dimensions. Due to the demonic energy now flowing through him, this demon cat took pleasure in killing the humans from those dimensions. He found that after killing a human, his power would increase. When he returned to Earth 666, a few demons saw his exploits and spread the word over time. A following and a cult began to form. This cult also increased the power of his demonic abilities. The more followers, the more demonic faith he gained. Over time, this cult leader would send others in his stead to sacrifice humans in other dimensions, increasing his power more and more. Temples were built and more cult branches started to form throughout Earth 666 with hidden counterpart temples in other dimensions, allowing all the energy from killing humans to be sent directly to the cult leader, no matter what dimension he's in. Over several centuries, the cult has grown, and within recent years, the cult has become known to the Department of Multiversal Matters, due to the large scale of unexplained deaths leading back to this cult and its leader. As for the name of this demonic cult leader, we've only heard rumours, but it seems his name is Loki, Although some have dubbed him as the fat blind cat due to his greed of killing humans in order to increase his power. Omega 5 team, Mission Loki's Ragnarok is a go. We repeat, Mission Loki's Ragnarok is a go. All of a sudden, an agent bursts into the room. Did you hear? They're going to attack that cult with that demonic cat like leader. What was it? Loki something or other. You know, the one that's recently popped up and been found to kill be killing humans across the multiverse. Everybody is on high alert. As Demonic Darkstorm hears this, she has one foot going through her head. C -c cult Master? So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy how the community redraw came out this time? I had a lot of fun taking your submissions and redrawing your demon characters. But it would be Nice twist to just do a plain redraw this time. Although we did introduce the Monica Darkstorm, our new narrator for all our demon episodes. So that was quite a bit of fun. Let me know what you think of her in the comments below. Which one of these was your favorite? I want to say thank you to everyone who submitted to Glitcher, Rufan, Omenheart, Jahomes008, Charzin, and a special mention to Gopher Dude. Like I said in the live stream that went wrong, I was going to redraw the Fat Blind Cat as a demonoid character, so we added him at the end and I hope you enjoy how Loki came out. For the next community redraw, it is design your own Pokemon or dragon. Do a headshot and a body shot and a bit of a description to say what its abilities are or what type it is. Submissions are to be in by the 19th of September, that's the deadline. So have fun everybody, I'll see you in the next video.